All right, so here we are. We have a rear wheel drive gearbox. And typically, when all of this is assembled in one unit, it will look something like this. Here we have the clutch hose. Where we have the clutch hose, also known as the bell hose. The casing. Some people call it the housing and the extension housing. So this is what a gearbox fully intact will look like. When we strip it down, when we strip it down with no casing, this is what we have. So here we have the um, the flywheel, <laughs> flywheel, clutch this, pressure plate, throw out bearing, and this is part of the clutch assembly unit. To operate this throw bear, throw out bearings, we can operate it by two means. We can use a hydraulic release mechanism that will be comprised of a master cylinder fluid line slate cylinder or we can have a mechanical release system which comprise our cable. Then now we have this gearbox right here. We have the output shaft and the output shaft would start it from right here to round here and then we have the lay shaft which is down here which people call second motion shaft or counter shaft so the objective of this video is to explain to you how the synchronizer works because you can look on some previous video that i've made where i identify parts of the gearbox even the most modern automatic transmission still comprise a synchronizer like the asg that are working the suzuki and the dual clutch gearbox that work in the Volkswagen and most European vehicles still use a synchronizer, still use a shift rod, still use a clutch bar. So even on an automatic ASG, DSG, dual clutch, still we're going to inter interface with this type of part. So typically, our synchronizer unit would comprise of the sleeve, of the hub, and of the blocking ring all right and then this is an input shaft because there's different between the input shaft remember all shafts are supported by bearing so it will look something similar to this it would look something similar to this where we have the sleeve the hub blocking ring and right here the friction cone the shine part right here is very important so let us explain how this works now. When we are driving, we need to ensure that we engage this throw out bearings right here and this throw out bearing will pressure against this pressure plate and it will release this clutch this or this driven plate or this center this. When the drive is released now, the clutch fork, the synchronizer fork would stuck in the sleeve. Come, let us identify these parts right here. Zoom in. Now, let us use this gear right here. Here, we have the dark teeth. Right here, the dark teeth. And the dark teeth must be pointed. When the dark teeth is blunt, that means the dark teeth is not good again. Here, we have the blocking ring. This is the blocking ring. Here's the blocking ring. The blocking ring teeth right here must be pointed. The blocking ring is made from brass so it's going to wear faster than the metal. Inside the blocking ring, there is groove. This groove must always be in the blocking ring. Once this groove are out, it is unable to cut the oil or to remove the oil. So we have the dark teeth blocking ring. And here we have the hub. And the hub, which is this, is spline to the output shaft. How does this synchronizer your work now? When the vehicle is driving and it's in gear, everything is okay. When the driver decides to change gear, he will first have to activate this throw out bearings. These throw out bearings will press against this pressure plate. When it press against this pressure plate, it will release the driver from the flywheel to the clutch lift. So there will be no engine drive going to the gearbox. The only thing will happen to the gearbox, the gearbox will operate in from momentum. It's similar like when you throw a gig and you have the gig just spinning and spinning. That is what we call momentum. 
So when this momentum is taking place now, we're going to engage first gear, big gear, small gear. First gear, big gear, small gear. Second gear, big gear, smaller gear. Third gear, big gear, small gear. Fourth gear, direct drive, a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to engage the first gear. So what we're going to do, we're going to push this sleeve forward. This sleeve will rub against this frictional cone right here. So this blocking ring will rub against the frictional cone. When the blocking ring rub against the frictional cone, it will slow down the shaft or it will equalize the speed of the shaft, of the output shaft. When the speed is equalized or synchronized, then now this sleeve will able to slide over the blocking ring and lock to the dark teeth. Drive is then transmitted from would have be from the lay shaft which is a small gear right here to the big gear from the big gear to the sleeve from the sleeve to the hub and because the hub is flying to the output shaft that's how the drive will go so let me repeat drive will enter the gearbox through the input shaft right here input shaft to the lay shaft it will turn all these gears and then this small gear here will turn this big gear right here and then from this big gear it is connected to the dark teeth just like this and then what happens now this blocking ring will slow down the gear rub against the friction cone the shine part right here slow it down when the gear equalizer slow down the sleeve now will lock to the dark teeth when when the sleeve lock to the dark teeth, the drive is transmitted from the dark teeth to the hub, which is this, and this hub is flying to the input shaft. And when it's flying to the input shaft, that's how the drive will transmit to the output shaft. So that's basically how our synchronizer works in our rear wheel drive gearbox, which comprises of the flywheel, clutch disc, pressure plate, throat bearings, input shaft, lay shaft, output shaft our main shaft synchronizer sleeve synchronizer hub blocking ring friction cone dark teeth and that's it